Toho's 2016 Shin Godzilla might be one of the greatest reboots ever. It both excellently executes on the film's original core concept and manages to reimagine Godzilla not as a metaphor for nuclear weapons, but as a force of nature. Directors Hideaki Ono and Shinji Higuchi were inspired by the 2011 tsunami and earthquake that triggered a meltdown of the Fukushima nuclear power plant. In their film, they use Godzilla to criticize the sluggish response of self-interested government officials who were more afraid of sounding hyperbolic and preserving their careers than they were of the giant creature wrecking havoc on Tokyo. After watching Shin Godzilla through the lens of an ongoing pandemic, it's become impossible for me to avoid the parallels between the fictional Japanese government's fumbled response to the titular kaiju and the previous US administration's response to the coronavirus epidemic. And that's why we're talking about how Shin Godzilla predicted America's coronavirus response. The actions and motivations of Japan's Prime Minister Seiji Okoji and his government in the film closely mirror former US President Trump and his administration's real-life actions throughout America's coronavirus response. In both crises, politicians and government officials hid behind the bureaucracy of the government to avoid making decisions that could actually help people. And instead of being motivated by the mitigation of damage and loss of life, they were preoccupied with preserving their reputations and political futures. It's going to disappear. One day it's like a miracle. It will disappear. And if you're wondering if both of these tales start in the same place, of course they do, with the government's refusal to quickly accept the reality of the situation. Shin Godzilla starts with an explosion in Tokyo Bay, which breaches the heavily trafficked Aqualine Tunnel. As multiple government agencies assemble to address the situation, the Japanese Prime Minister assembles his team to try and figure out what's going on. There's just one problem. It takes five grueling meetings before officials begrudgingly accept there's a giant creature heading toward the city. Sorry. <laughs> Thanks to the efforts of one official, Yaguchi, who kept pointing to internet videos and bringing up the creature, the Japanese government couldn't avoid the truth anymore. Similarly, in early 2020, the Trump administration was also trying to avoid an unpleasant truth trickling in from the Chinese city of Wuhan. Reporting showed that Trump and his administration were warned 10 times about the coronavirus between January 18th and February 25th, 2020 four days before the first official death was reported on February 29th. And the White House Coronavirus Response Coordinator, Dr. Deborah Burks, has recently said that someone was giving President Trump information that her task force did not produce. I'm convinced there were parallel data streams because I- Disinformation. I saw the president presenting graphs that I never made. Just like in Shin Godzilla, the Trump administration couldn't agree on a singular set of facts. But with enough time, the truth becomes unavoidable, and government officials have no choice but to address the public to soothe their fears. Instead of taking that advice, the Japanese PM chose to use the press conference not to inform people of potential dangers, but to give people a false sense of security. While the Prime Minister wasn't even able to get off the stage before being contradicted by the situation's quickly changing facts, that wasn't the case for President Trump. His press conferences following the first coronavirus death in the US attempted to similarly soothe public fears about a deadly menace reaching its shores. Additional cases in the United States are likely, but healthy individuals should be able to fully recover. 
So healthy people, if you're healthy, you will probably uh, go through a process and, and you'll be fine. Both the fictional and real life officials downplayed the crisis on TV. And it's not hard to come to the assumption that they made that calculation and prioritized protecting their image over protecting the people. But the behind the scenes failure to act will only make both situations much worse. Time is of the essence in Shin Godzilla, and something needs to be done to curb this marauding monster. Not only is the creature getting bigger, but Tokyo's buildings just aren't equipped to handle the weight of this developing kaiju. Every minute something isn't done, millions in damages are being accrued, and more importantly, lives are lost. Officials thought about evacuating all of Tokyo, but restricted it to the area surrounding Godzilla because authorities believed <laughs> Meanwhile, it became clear that the military would be necessary to both aid in the evacuation and combat the monster. The problem? A military response was legally dubious since the law only allowed for troops to use force in self-defense against an aggressor country or equivalent. I guess they didn't have the foresight to put a hostile sea monster in their constitution. Mobilizing the military would undoubtedly save lives, but the Prime Minister's delay to mobilize the troops out of a fear of collateral damage highlights how his fears surrounding the public perception of his actions trump his fears of the baby Godzilla thrashing the city. Instead of bold measures, they evacuate in pieces. And as the problem escalates, the officials realize the magnitude of their error when Godzilla learns how to stand on its own two feet. In similar fashion, the Trump administration was hesitant to issue mandates, share new scientific breakthroughs, and discuss policy, especially during the early days of the pandemic when new information was still developing. In the pandemic's early days, when PPE supplies were low and medical grade masks needed to be reserved for healthcare workers, the US government did everything they could to discourage panic buying of N95 masks. Then, as the scientific community discovered the benefits of masks in public, the CDC's recommendation changed. But Trump was hesitant to advocate for mask wearing and refused to wear one on camera for months. So with uh, the masks, it's going to be uh, really a voluntary thing. I think uh, wearing a face mask as I greet presidents, prime ministers, dictators, kings, queens, I don't know, somehow I don't see it for myself. But it wasn't just the evolution of scientific recommendations that weighed heavy on Trump during the election year. It was also the fact that wearing a mask wasn't adopted by a lot of Americans, especially among his supporters. I mean, if he's not wearing a mask, I'm not gonna wear a mask. If he's not worried, I'm not worried. The president. Yes, sir. I don't wear a mask for the same reason I don't un wear underwear. Things gotta breathe. You literally cannot mandate somebody to wear a mask knowing that that mask is killing people. It literally is killing people. Publicly, it seems neither leader wanted to make potentially unpopular decisions for the greater good. In Shin Godzilla, if PM Okochi mobilized the army faster, many more lives could have been saved. In America's case, all the science proved that wearing masks and social distancing were crucial to help flattening the curve. However, each leader's preoccupation with their long-term electability would have major repercussions as each crisis continued to get worse due to inaction. The tricky thing about inaction is that it doesn't usually solve the problem. The Prime Minister in Shin Godzilla had the perfect opportunity to stop a still developing Godzilla, but hesitated and ultimately called off the attack because he was afraid of how the collateral damage would play on the evening news. This singular moment of inaction likely cost many lives and billions of dollars of damage since this was the last opportunity the government had to confront Godzilla before it let out its atomic breath. 
While Atomic Breath is a little more incendiary than the New York Times new coronavirus cases tracker, COVID-19 has definitely wrecked more havoc than one fully developed kaiju obliterating a city. But just like the officials in Godzilla, the US dragged its heels to tackle the problem. Of course, attack helicopters were never on the table for COVID relief, but there were tools that could have been used to greater effect to stem the spread of the virus. As the number of cases grows, there's a new warning tonight. The U.S. does not have enough coronavirus test kits to meet the current demand. The U.S. contact tracing is also a major concern as new cases of the virus outpace the nation's ability to track who infected people may have come into contact with. As infections, hospitalizations, and deaths soar at a terrifying rate. Tonight, Dr. Anthony Fauci is issuing a new warning to states about the dangers of easing restrictions too quickly. To be clear, the Trump administration did take actions to try and curb the coronavirus. In early February, former President Trump restricted travel from China and also suspended travel from Europe in mid-March. He also sent a Navy hospital ship to help New York City's overcrowded hospitals and signed a $2.2 trillion coronavirus relief bill that provided much needed short term relief to millions of Americans. But just like fictional PM Okochi's unsuccessful attack on Godzilla, Trump's actions also failed to stave off disaster. Interestingly, in both Shin Godzilla and real life, both leaders ultimately fell victim to their own inaction and would not be the leaders who ultimately see their crises to their conclusion. Japanese PM Okochi was unfortunately killed in a Godzilla attack in Tokyo, and President Trump himself, who came down with COVID-19 in 2020, ultimately lost his re-election campaign. Instead, it would take new leaders who marshaled the scientific community and strategic resources of their countries to overcome the threat. Godzilla was eventually conquered in Japan, but it wasn't done by optimistic thinking or brute force. Instead, the killer kaiju would be defeated by a team of international scientists who came together and figured out the molecular makeup of a blood coagulant that would freeze Godzilla from the inside out. Just like in Godzilla decimated Japan, the US will also rely on science to help defeat its foe. With significant support from the U.S. government and private industry, the world now has two FDA-approved vaccines to combat COVID-19. Unfortunately, science alone can't solve either problem. To do that, the prime minister and the president would need to marshal the full resources of their respective governments to turn their plans into reality. <laughs> With that stamp, Japan was able to requisition the resources needed to both manufacture enough coagulant to freeze the beast, coordinate aircraft and trains to distract Godzilla, and commandeer the tankers needed to deliver the fatal frosty straight to the kaiju's lips. In the US, we are hoping for a similar solution. And just like in Shin Godzilla, it's going to take a frank acceptance of the facts, teamwork, decisive government action, and a Herculean effort to manufacture enough of the vaccine to inoculate over 300 million Americans. Right now, the new administration has pledged 100 million vaccine shots in 100 days, and it looks like the new administration is going to use the federal government to marshal the resources needed to get it done, just like in Shin Godzilla. As I said before, we'll use the Defense Production Act to work with private industry to accelerate the making of materials needed to supply and administer the vaccine. Hopefully, President Biden makes good on this promise so that we can begin the difficult task of rebuilding after all is said and done. Picasso once said, art is a lie that makes us realize the truth. While Shin Godzilla was based on the inadequate government response to a Japanese natural disaster, where the antagonist wasn't a skyscraper-sized fire-breathing creature, but the slow-moving governmental bureaucracy tasked with defeating it. It turns out, stories about self-serving politicians too timid to act during a disaster out of concern for their reputations and political futures is a universal theme that knows no borders and applies to any crisis. Masaka. Orwa Junengo Kangatir. 
その時にまだ日本が残っていたら総裁選に立候補してくれ応援するよ見返りは幹事長のポストでいい<笑>